I, I say that as an IBO, as an independent basketball observer, you will smoke the Miami Heat. And one guy who I know I agrees know. with me. I don't know. Is the leader of this Nick fan base. It is not Stephen A. Smith. That's a lie. Okay? It is not Spike Lee. It's half a lie. Oh, come on. It is my man himself. CP, the franchise of Nick Fan TV. CP, welcome back to WFAN. Please, while we're together, don't insult my basketball team. How are you? My guys, my guys. Happy to be back. I'm still glad my key card works. I know this was Spike's yeah. last day yesterday. Ah, screw him. <laughs> Your key card works forever, right. my man. Now he can't turn it off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Mr. Barber, happy to be back on with you. Thank you, you brother. How Great you to doing, see you. Good, are you, good to are be you back. You're not scared of the, the heat, are I'm not you? scared of anybody. What what is the scare talk? I'm not saying you're scared. What is the scare? See, that's the Nets fan in you. That's the Nets <laughs> side. That's the, I, I know. I couldn't help it. That was the Nets <laughs> side of you, man. We're not, we don't duck smoke here. I don't think you should duck any kind of smoke. And I, yeah. I appreciate what they did and what Tom Thibodeau did in the final few minutes of that Chicago game. I was telling the story on the air the other day. I'm at the Met game. And I have my phone set up, and I'm explaining to my dad every playoff situation. Like, here's who the Knicks would play here. Here's what would happen there. And so we all knew that the Cleveland Cavaliers quit. They decided, we're done. We're not going to play. And you knew in those final few minutes, we win, as in you, Mm -hmm. two-seed Miami or Philly. We lose, we play Indiana. I got to tell you, I say this honestly, I respected the hell out of the fact that Tom Thibodeau and the Knicks said, screw it, match up or not, we want to win this game. How did you feel watching that, though? Good. You agree with that? that? That's Tibbs. He's like Coughlin, right? right. Just we got to play to win. No, well, Herm Edwards said that. But you got to oh, play to win the game. You you got to go pedal to the metal. That is Tibbs. That is his mentality. You have to get ready and and put yourself in position, gain, gain some momentum. Look at what Billy Donovan did. Yep. The Bulls had nothing to play for. They went for it, too. They went for it. Now, Evan positioned this as the Knicks getting screwed for having success. Right? They did. Yeah. You, you, no, you have to admit that, CP. Well, you have a worse well, first-round matchup because of it. You do, but... I, this is my this was my response to you in real time when this happened. The Knicks don't feel like they're gonna they like they're at a disadvantage against anybody. Right? This Knicks team is just different. It's variable. They can play different ways. They rebound the hell out of the ball, which nobody else in yeah. NBA does anymore. I mean, hell, Josh Hart had sixteen rebounds in multiple games this year. So it's not like they're scared of say a, a size disadvantage. Because they'll go small, right? Or or they, they'll shoot from around with four out. Like, they'll do ev- anything that needs to do to win, which is unique yeah. for Tom Thibodeau. I think that's the biggest difference that we've seen with this Knicks team is that they're not the same team every night. It's not the same team. It's definitely not the same team. This team has a high floor. They're a tough defense. They play physical. Mm. They can rebound. Look at when they lost Julius, they lost Mitch, and they were still one of the best rebounding teams in the league right. because of Hartenstein, because Josh Hart, the best rebounding guard in the league, presses Achua. He held them down for a long time until the re- some reinforcements can come back. Now they have shooting efficiency. Look at Dante DiVincenzo, one of the best three-point shooters in the league. OG Adenobi from the corners. Now we'll see how his elbow you know, fares in the playoffs. Hopefully he can get that efficiency back, but it's a different team. And then in the end... You have the clutch factor with the legit MVP. Remember, we talked about this the last time I was here. Yes, yes. A legit all NBA first team, first team, yes. first team, yes. and the reigning defending Eastern Conference. Just player not of the week. an, just not an Olympian CP. Mm-hmm. That's all. Mm-hmm. Oh, they screwed him. <laughs> they screwed. I know, I know they did. They <laughs> absolutely screwed him. They put Old Man Holiday and Halliburton. Come you on. Know, man. It's funny when you were on last. I, know, I was right. I don't around. even want to watch. Like you want to watch that? <laughs> LeBron, Kevin Durant, they've got yeah. plenty of guys. No, there, they're going to be fine, but they already did that. Jalen Brunson got screwed. You I'd got be, the, pro- I'd be the first one to admit that. When we had our discussion about Jason Tatum versus Jalen Brunson a few months ago, since that moment, you win the debate, right? Like I, I, yeah. I, I won't lie to you. I, I'm not going to like try to argue that out. Jalen Brunson has been playing on a superstar insanity kind of level. With that said, I give you round one. You won round one. Yes. He's played like an MVP. I commend you. You won the argument. But here's where round two occurs. Can he do that in the postseason? Is he going to be the top Mm -hmm. three player like he's played? And he has. He's played like a top three player in the freaking league over the last month. I admit it. Can he do that come postseason time? Why would you think he can't? Right. The resume's there. The skepticism I have is, A, his size. B, the fact that everyone's coming for him. Now, the one thing that scares me is the way he reacted to what Boston did on Friday. Like, it didn't even freaking matter. Yeah, didn't matter. (laughs) We'll send Jalen, we'll send Tatum, we'll send Dove, we'll try all these different things, and it didn't matter. But you know it's just different in the postseason. Can he do that? Especially if you ever get to a series against Boston, which is certainly on the table. Can he outplay him in a series like that? And that's where we're going to find out who wins round two. But you won round one. 
He can do it. It, it. To me, it's not about Brunson. It's about the supporting cast. Are they going to step up? Because the huge hole in this lineup is Julius Randle. You're missing an all-NBA, all-star player. And even though his playoff performances have not been good with the Knicks, you still can't discredit the factor of how he's presented on the court. Teams have to prepare for that. Right? He's a guy that draws double no teams. Doubt. He's a guy yeah. that can create for guys. He's a guy that can get to the free throw line, which is one concern that I have about this team is their ability to get high percentage shots and draw fouls and get easier shots at the free throw line. So I think Brunson will deliver. It's the supporting cast that it's, it's a bit well, more of a concern for me. How about this? Because we saw this at the end of the Miami series where I think it was in game five. Thibodeau had him play 48 minutes. I think it was yeah. in game five. Yeah. And then in game six, he played like 43 minutes, whatever it was. And we've seen it in the regular season that one of the biggest areas where they miss Julius is the offense when Jalen is sitting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How far does Thibodeau push him early where we don't get that many minutes where Jalen is sitting? Like, will we see, should we see Jalen Brunson right from get playing 44 minutes in a postseason game? No, you have to give guys a chance. And, and the two guys that are going to be key here are, number one, Boyan Bogdanovich. Mm-hmm. Because outside of oh, yeah. Jalen Brunson and second to Josh Hart, He's their third most reliable shot creator. Yeah. So how he handles pressure defense, make sure he doesn't turn over the ball. He's got to be a high-efficiency shooter for them. And most importantly, he has to stay on the court defensively. Because once he gets in the game, he's going to be a marked man. Yeah. So he's got to be steady there. And secondly, Deuce McBride. He has been a sharp shooter for this Knicks team. If Deuce can go out there and knock down those open threes, he shows some creation in the mid-range, that will give you some time. Like the Chicago game in that fourth quarter, it was McBride and Boyan Bogdanovich that allowed Brunson a little bit of rest and then to come in and take over. Yeah, I mean, you talk about that rest and that that keeping guys fresh. It's the one thing that I don't know how it's going to play out is what is Tom Thibodeau going to do when he normally shortens his bench? Like, he... Like he didn't do it in the regular season. You started to see it two was it last year or two seasons? I forget when it was. When the bench got like it was like seven guys that were playing. That was it. Everybody else you might as well not even put your jock on, right? It was one of those moments this year where it's like he's just he's going deep, right? He's gonna let eight nine guys play. He's gonna give precious uh, minutes even if it didn't feel like he deserved it. And by the way, precious rewarded him, right? And so did Deuce. And so the the one thing that I I get like nervous about if I'm a Knicks fan is what happens when we get to the playoffs and he gets, like, like short arms. He doesn't want to reach out and, hey, get off the bench, Precious, or get off the bench, yeah. Deuce. Like, if that happens, I think that's when the Knicks get in trouble. I think Deuce has proven that. He he needs playoff minutes. Right. I think his, I his minutes in the of rotation are solidified. Does, but is he actually going to do it? Yes, that's, that's absolutely. The question. They need him. They they need him. It's it's all hands on deck in, a, in an eight-man rotation. You know who's not getting playoff minutes? Yeah, CP knows. <laughs> your guy, yeah, you guy, Alec Burks. You missed on that one. <laughs> Listen, just a little well, bit. Well, he missed. He, no, he no, got you it got, right. He predicted yeah. it right. Yes. But it was just a, yes. it was a it bad was a move. Miss. It I just hope, hasn't worked for whatever reason. I hope you weren't worked. talking directly to the front office. Yes. Yeah. I mean, listen, the, the, the one thing about Leon Rosen is, and their regime is that uh, they've stuck to the game plan. No doubt. They had the assets. They had the cachet to go out there and get whoever they wanted to upgrade this team and make a real run in the East. But they said they're they're looking to the, to the future. They want the cap flexibility in getting Burks and Bogdanovich. Burks hasn't worked out, so he's uh, he's at the end of the bench. He's in the trunk, as we say on Knicks Fan TV. And Bogdanovich is, is proven in that. In the trunk. He's in the trunk. There, there was a lady that called in and said, Burks sucks, put him in the trunk. <laughs> and it's been a viral sensation since then. So, yeah, it hasn't worked out for me. Yeah, it's just a serious question. Yeah. That's, a, that's a cool one. <laughs> yeah, I like that, that phrase. Yes, <laughs> put him in the trunk. Because I've been thinking about this for like the last two weeks. Yeah. I don't know what to do. I'm very okay. loyal to the teams I root for. Yeah. I'm a Met fan. I'm a Jet fan. I'm a Nets fan. I don't like yeah. the Knicks, but I, I try to be fair about them. Okay. But I like what you guys do. I watch Nick Fan TV a lot. If I went and wore a Nick Fan TV hat, yes, am I a sellout, or am I just yeah. like am I? I can still be a good Brooklyn Net fan and wear sure. a KFTV hat. You said yeah. no. Well, for two reasons. What? Number one, you already sold out when you got the Knicks tickets. So, <laughs> so when you show up at the Garden to watch games, you already bailed on the Brooklyn Brigade. Sold out? Yeah, uh, you already bailed on the Brooklyn Brigade. But secondly, we got a ton of Nets fans in, in our chats, oh, do you? in our comments. Are they yeah, hating they on the Knicks too, or are they like, ah, oh, yeah, and, we're just in the shadows? You know, yeah. they'll hate here and there, but they, they respect what they well, do. They, uh, with, they which, love the is it interest- real hate or is it just jealousy? Oh, it's jealousy. Mm, yeah. It's jealousy and hate. Yeah. yeah. You think you don't think I yeah. want to be in the postseason? You don't think yeah. I want to have the two right. seat? So, that's what I'm asking. So, uh, <laughs> yes, hypothetically, <laughs> in a year from now, let's say two, whatever, yeah. the Nets are also that's not in this. Con- yeah. I'm just saying, hypothetically, okay, like, <laughs> suspend reality okay. and use your imagination. Go ahead. In two years, because yeah. I didn't, I know, it's not happening next year. In two right. years, the Nets are in the postseason. Uh-huh. Are you as hateful on the Nets? Oh yeah, or on the Knicks. Yeah, the hate doesn't change. <laughs> but I think what's so it's interesting. Not jealousy, then. 
No, it's hate, it's hate and jealousy. It's a combination of both. But what allows me to think clearly is we, we are the opposite. We're yeah. the same, but we're the opposite, right? You're looking at things on how can the Knicks win? How can they win a championship? Yep. What needs to be done? And I look at it as what can stop the Knicks? Okay. What can knock them off? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about tomorrow night, Miami, Philadelphia, I'm coming from a perspective of I will sit there with my popcorn and I will root actively for the team that I believe mm. will beat you or can beat you. You, I assume, yeah. will sit there. Not that you're afraid of anybody, because I don't want people to keep construing this the wrong way. No one's saying you guys should be afraid of anybody. But you're still going to sit there and root for a team that you'd rather play in the postseason. Like, that's just the reality, right? Um, I, don't, I mean, no. um... In in the in this case this of feels Philly versus like it Miami, doesn't really matter. I don't, it doesn't matter. Oh, stop! It yeah. does not matter. You so wait. Hold on. Yeah. When you watch the game tomorrow night, yes. You having a watch party? You're just watching it by yourself. Watching tomorrow with your night, kid? we we will be doing a, a play by play. Actually. You're doing a play by play. Yes, we will be. Yes. I love those. Very yes. crisp. So you're doing a play by play. Yes. You are not going to have a rooting interest when Tyrese Maxey goes up for a three, no. hoping it goes in or no. hoping mm -hmm. he misses. No. I will crap. not. I'll, I'll tell you this, bro. If, with Miami and Philly. It's reputation versus reality. The Miami reputation. I agree with that. With uh -huh. Spolster. I was just down there two weeks ago. I watched them get smoked by that Heat team. You have to respect it, right? Because they can turn up sure. at, at a certain point. They have a lot of versatility. And with the, against the Knicks, I don't see many advantages that this Knicks team has against the Heat. Philadelphia, they're one of the hottest teams in the East. Eight straight. They have the MVP, the reigning MVP, and Joel Embiid, yeah. him and Maxi are a dynamic duo. I think Philly has the depth to contend with the Knicks, the size, the physicality. I think both teams will be a difficult matchup. There, there is no easy run here just because the Knicks got this second seed. Because Philadelphia is not a legitimate play-in team. Completely agree with no. you. That's why what I said the other day, and sometimes it's the messenger. I'm the wrong messenger because yes. I admit yes. I don't this like the This is why Knicks. I'm here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. I said co <laughs> the Knicks in a way got screwed. Like, they're the two seed. You deserve better than this. Miami, we know how they can turn it on. You mentioned it. We know what Philadelphia should be, and it's why, and I think this idea has been floated before, it's not my own creation, that the top seed should get to pick their opponent. Like, that should be your reward for being a top seed, a one seed or a two seed, because I think it applies even for Boston, and certainly on the west side with OKC and Denver, where your first-round matchup, you're going to look at and say, that ain't a real first-round matchup, and you guys playing Philadelphia is not a real fair first-round matchup. So I say that, and Nick fans take it as, what are you saying, we should be scared of them? No, I'm not saying you should be scared of them, but you would admit that these matchups that you are potentially getting are more difficult yeah. than what you would have chosen. Because you probably choose, no offense to Orlando or Indiana, yeah. Yeah. you're probably well, choosing them over yeah. potentially facing Philly. Yeah, what it shows Orlando or the Cavs. Those mm -hmm. are the two. I agree with the Cavs, too. Exactly. Absolutely. So. I don't think yeah. it's crazy that the one and two seed should get that right in yeah, the future but I, but of the I, NBA. I think it's a little different. With so the, the Heat, the Heat have earned where they sit. I agree. The, the yeah. Heat play whether they're slow playing it, whether they just it's the regular season. They just immediately have done this a year ago, going from the play in losing and and then going all the way to the NBA Finals. So like they earned where they are right now. I think the Seventy Sixers, however, I, they're fake at seven. Because if they have Joel Embiid for those 40 games that he missed or whatever it was, 43 games that he missed, they're not the seventh seed. They're probably the two seed. And so yeah. one side of this I can agree with you on. Like, they get screwed because the 76ers are right there. But the Heat, are just, this is just the Heat. Yeah. This is what they do. They rely on, like, the miracle of great coaching or, or playoff Jimmy Butler to be that to be that team that or being a really you. dirty team, which is <laughs> <laughs> whatever, yeah, exactly, whatever it is. Like, but they know it, they yeah. own it. Like, they own and they earned exactly where they are. The 76ers are a different uh, battle, which is why I think in our minds, you know, whether or not you don't care, but in our minds, we think of the 76ers as the big challenge. But I said this when we when we first started having this discussion, whatever, two weeks ago, because it was lining up that the Knicks might get screwed and have to play the 76ers. They have the bodies to throw at them though. Right? Yeah. Right? Even if even if you have to throw a massive size disadvantage and put pressures in there, dude, just foul him, bro. Right? Just yeah. take well, take the fouls. And man. he's a foul merchant at Joel Embiid. Sure. But that's what I mean. Like, there are ways to frustrate him. There are ways to make Joel Embiid not feel comfortable. And the Knicks, fortunately, especially with Mitch back, they have bodies that can do it. Like that that's why you why you don't necessarily worry about him.
Yeah, they're going to need it because there are going to be games in that series should Philly move on where Isaiah Hartenstein, you know how the playoff goes, where once he might have the edge and then mm-hmm. the next game the referees, you know, they're a little bit light on the whistle. Hartenstein picks up two whistles real quick in the first quarter and then you have to go to Robinson. Then you might have to go to Precious. And so the Knicks front court depth is going to be key in that series. There's really no weakness when it comes to Joel Embiid outside of his durability and maybe his conditioning. He just got hurt in, I think, the penultimate game of the regular season. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how he looks tomorrow. But those are the only ways that that they're really going to be able to slow him down. More on the potential first-round matchup with CP as well as the rest of this potential Nick run we may all be going on. And we'll mix in some calls, too, potentially 877-337-6666. We are live from the Town Fair Tire Studios, powered by Town Fair Tire. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. They heated down by one. Jimmy Butler. Puts up about a 12-footer. The the horn goes off. If it goes in, it's the Heat against the Knicks. If it rims out, it's the Sixers against the Knicks. (laughs) In that second, as you're watching that ball float through the air, CP the franchise, what do you want to see happen? A miss. Oh, let's get his mic on. Here we go. Check, check. A miss. I will never root for Miami Heat prosperity any any time at any point in my next. So that means you'd prefer to face the Philadelphia 76ers. I will, I will never root for the Miami Heat. Yeah, okay, bring on the Sixers. Well, bring them on. on. Hold on. Yeah. Joel Embiid and the Sixers are down by one point. Yeah, and Joel puts up a fadeaway jumper at the buzzer. Are you rooting for that to go in or go out? I'll probably leave and go get a snack. So <laughs> <I won't. laughs> I'm trying to figure out deep down in your soul yeah. who he wants to face. Who you want to <laughs> face or who you prefer to face. And and it's not about ducking anybody. Yeah. It's not about thinking a team is easy to beat. It's just about preference. Like, we all have preferences. Yeah. I want Miami. You want Miami. I want revenge yeah. off for Brunson. That game six, costly turnover. Yep. I want revenge for Julius Randle. I want to see them exercise their demons. That has to be the next story in the chapter in their story. They need to finish their story. They need mm. to finish the story. And the story starts. Like Cody Rhodes. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> By the way, I would agree with that. Like, I yeah. think, and look, I've said on the air, I think you guys will kill Miami. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Yeah. But I think you're better than them. And I think that kind of fixing the demons of last year, first of all, I don't think Miami's as good. And I think you guys are better. So when you combine those two things, I agree with you. I think the Miami Heat are the preferred matchup. The, the the issue is the question marks on this team without Julius Randle. Like we have we saw Josh Hart. He was bad in the playoffs last yes, year. Yeah. He's been great for this team this year. He's been ever, Mr. Everything, an Iron Man, everything. He was terrible in the playoffs. Eric Spolstra exposed him. And he at times has a you know a tunnel vision where or or just lack of confidence. In terms of his shot selection, right. and that compromises the spacing for the entire team. Teams right. don't even care to guard him. No. Right. Next up is Divincenzo. I need to see him in a big spot. Is he going to continue to be an inferno as he's been in in, uh, in the regular season? Yeah, I mean that was the one good thing about Julius and all the injuries is that Josh actually had to start shooting. Right. It was like, dude, you can't give it up. Can't to, for a better shot. Early yeah. in the season, he yeah. was afraid. He was. He afraid. was definitely afraid. Yeah. And. You saw it over a couple of the games in the middle of that injury spurt, where he just said, "All right, whatever," and start. And he's and he's good at it. Like, but he yeah. he he lacked the confidence. But I think he needed to do it. Right. Just right. kind of like Deuce needed to do it. And now Deuce is a forty plus percent three point shooter, and he's going to be valuable at some point. So, I, again, we we know what the injuries thought. We know the Julius Randle thing is a big deal because you you can't bully ball offensively without him. Right. I mean, may, Mitch maybe can do it a little bit, but not really. He does because he can't create really on his own. So off, off the pick and roll. So it's different. But I think these other guys developed something that they would not have if they if if Julius was in this lineup. Speaking of uh, Dante Divincenzo, two hundred eighty three made threes, forty percent from three. Hmm. Not eligible for the NBA's Most Improved Player Award. Did you Did you read that? I you saw that. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way that the NBA classifies games played, yes, okay, you have to play more than twenty minutes. Right, and they have that new sixty-five game rule. Yeah, for Divincenzo, he played sixty-two games with twenty minutes or more, but they they only grant you two games where you can play less, where you can play between fifteen and twenty. You can only do that twice before ridiculous. he disqualified. It's ridiculous. So he's had kidding? he's yeah. had more games where he's played between fifteen and twenty minutes over the two game allotment. 
that the league has, has issued. Wow. So he's only at 62. I was, he missed the cutoff. I was reading about it earlier, and wow. I have to tell you, I was so confused. All right. yeah. It didn't make sense. It makes no sense. And, you know, it's funny about that Dante. It's too nuanced to be relevant or important. Yeah. And, and it's all based on getting guys to play more games, but yeah. in this case, it doesn't serve the purpose. Like, Dante yeah. DiVincenzo wasn't sitting out games for maintenance. Like, and he also had a handful of games we were talking about earlier this season where Thibodeau was playing him like 39 minutes, 40 minutes yeah. a night. Yeah, that's so, why he hurt his hamstring. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> <Right>. absolutely <laughs> convinced of that. Yeah. Like, that's the, you know, Tom Thibodeau gets a lot of crap. Some of it's not fair anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was the one time this year where I thought, okay, he got a guy hurt. Yeah. Because Dante David DiVincenzo had like one game in his entire career where he played more than 40 minutes. Now all of a sudden he's playing 40 minutes like every single night, yeah. and then he injures his hamstring. That's such a BS rule. It is a BS rule, and I think he deserves the most improved player. His play in the playoffs could potentially impact how the Knicks build this team going forward. Mm-hmm. I, I think his performance is could be free? major for them. Is he free? He's not free. They, they signed no, him no, to he a signed mid-level long-term. exception. Yeah. Got it. I think he's the best contract in the NBA right. when you talk about value and impact. But his play could could swing things in the in the, po- so, in the offseason. A lot of times during the postseason. Oh, you mean like bringing in somebody? To right. Do, I got it. Right. I got it. Right. How, roster construction. Right. Got it. A lot of times during the postseason, there are these role players, and you see such a great difference between the way they play at home and the way they play on the road. Very very common thing. Dante Divincenzo can't be that. Can't. If he's that, they'll lose in the first round mm, to a yep. team like Philadelphia. They need him to kind of. And, and my question is, are you confident he's more than that? Because he yeah. has taken such a big step this year. And I give the coaching yeah. staff a ton of credit. Well, this is why you want it to be Philly there. Yeah. Close to home. Close to Nova. <laughs> the Nova, right? Oh, God. The Nova, Nova Knicks. Let's go. The Nova Knicks are at home. <laughs> I haven't even thought about that Nova connection there. <laughs> are you confident Dante DiVincenzo is that guy? No. I have mm. to see it. Yeah. And and the thing is, is that we talk about Spolstra with Miami – the thing about Philly that gives them a, a leg up is they don't have Doc Rivers anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they have a championship coach. They have a championship yeah. coach who's not afraid to mix it up, not afraid to make adjustments. And the thing about DiVincenzo is once they run him off the three-point line, mm-hmm. can he make a mid-range shot? He doesn't have the wingspan to finish at the rim. That's one of the things that he's not. That's one of his biggest weaknesses. And so he's going to have to both play make and be able to make tough shots once they try to take away his strength, which is his three-point shooting. He's been great this year, though. He's had an unbelievable year. I was saying yeah. this earlier to Tiki. One of the big compliments, I, I, I guess I have to give this to Tom Thibodeau. I don't know where else I go with it, is that watching the NBA just as a fan, Dante DiVincenzo, Josh Hart, and I Hart, those three guys in particular, they were always nice NBA players, and watching them now mm. all the time – they are far better than I could have imagined, or they're just flat out better. That this coaching staff has clearly unlocked those three guys, where they are significantly better players than what they were throughout their NBA careers. Tibbs deserves a lot more credit, and there's been times throughout the, his four years where fans have wanted, wanted to run him out of town. But if you look at individual player performances, just like you said, DiVincenzo, Miles McBride, look at where he's been. Yeah, big steps, yeah. Isaiah Hartenstein credits Tom Thibodeau for his defensive improvements because he didn't have that reputation when he came in from the Clippers. And so he's going to get a big bag in the offseason, hopefully by the Knicks, or, or he could be gone. So Tibbs deserves a lot of credit. You look at Preston Achua. A lot of people looked at him as a throw-in in mm-hmm. the OG Ananobi trade. He felt like it those first like, three or four he games. He did. He was a disaster. I, I was ready to run him out of town. Right. But, Shooting three-pointers. Yeah. Like, what are you doing, bro? Yeah. Stop. He's, he's played well. And, and now you have Randall, three-time All-Star. Brunson, first-time All-Star. So, Tibbs is another guy. He's going to get that extension in the offseason, I believe. Does Jalen Brunson finish in the top five of the MVP? He should. He's number four you, for do me. You, do you think he will? Yes. Because this is, this is about the disrespect for Jalen Brunson. Do you think yes. he does? Yes. I think it'll be – I hope Shea Gilgis Alexander wins it first of all. Hmm. I, th- I think he deserves it. It's Being be, able it's to take be that OKC yeah. team from 10th in the I, West last year I'm to, with you, man. To, to the top. I, I agree. He Definitely deserves. SGA. He's not going to win yeah, it, but – He deserves it. He right. deserves it. So, in logical order, you say Jokic, SGA, Luka. Get Giannis out of there. What, yeah. what have mm-hmm. they done? Jalen Brunson has done the most with the least this year and led his team to the second seed in the East, 50 right. wins – Notable improvements across the board, and had to do it largely by himself. And twenty of those, thirty of those games, he missed. He was missing. That's right. B- the big compliments for his team. Absolutely, all, all NBA, all NBA. Is so, he, is he? Is he also all NBA? Yes, first team, first team, first team. We'll we'll, we'll bump Tatum out of there. <laughs> <laughs> now the Knicks get disrespected, and yeah. here's I'm gonna give you evidence because I, I was saying the other day because someone called in like, why do you think Jalen Brunson doesn't get the respect? My yeah. theory I have. This is where I can be fair, 
is that I think that there's an LOL Knicks tendency that the national media has. Mm -hmm. They want to make fun of the Knicks, just like they want to make fun of the Jets and the Mets. I think that's why I can relate to it, because I root for those two other teams. And the problem is the Knicks, not quite the Jets yet, they've earned their way away from being made fun of. And I saw something today, and it actually pissed me off. And I'm not, again, pissed me off. I hate the Knicks. This video leaking out. This video, if you haven't seen it, there's a video that leaked out that everybody's mm-hmm. making fun of. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Paulo Torre, I guess, had it. Of the Knicks video pitch to LeBron James. Yeah. And it features the Sopranos. It features James Gand- the late James Gandolfini. I think it features Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. It features yeah. a few things. It's corny as hell. I right. think we'd all agree with that. And it's lame as and hell. And it makes no sense that it's out right now. Right. Why are you talking about old stuff? Oh, it makes <laughs> sense why it's out right now. Because... <laughs> There's nothing to make fun of the Knicks about. Like, the Knicks are legitimately good. I mean, I like them. They're legitimately good. They're a contender. They're a two-seed. And all of a sudden, out of the clear blue sky, a video comes out, which everyone wants to make fun of the Knicks. The first thing I looked at is, who leaked that? Who put that out there? Because it really does feel like it's a part of an agenda to like, hey, we can't really make fun of the Knicks anymore, but how about this? 12 years ago, they tried to get LeBron. Where do you think that came from? It's got to be some former employee. I think so. I think it's just an employee with an axe to grind, but it's not going to work. The Knicks fans are Teflon. They don't care about that. Well, why would they care about it? It was a decade and a half ago. That's why why the timing is odd. It was weird. It was weird. But like I said, the Knicks fan doesn't care. So they come to me. They come to our platform to talk Knicks. But this is why I got to hold you accountable. What I do? I'm defending you. Because I I hear and notice similar things at this station. What I do? Mm -hmm. Oh, the station. Not you in particular. Not you in particular. Go ahead. You know, Boomer, he wants to stick to his hockey. Okay, fine. Uh, Gio, I don't even know if he knows the Knicks play basketball. <laughs> he, he wants to stick to his impersonations and all of that. His comedy stick, which, you know, hey, it's to each his own. Right. You got the 10 to 2 guys. I call them worst take because all they want to do is just come out with the worst takes possible. <laughs> and by the way, when they hung up on my guy, our good buddy callbacks, I didn't like that. All right. I, it, was, it was old news, but I didn't like that. So you're mad at them, you're mad at the morning guys, what else? You're our only hope. (laughs) You are our only hope. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Do not feed into the nonsense. No, no, I did, listen man, this kind of crap, like that video coming out, is nonsense. That's why the only time I would bring it up is to call out the nonsense of why would something like that come out? Like, it's it's irrelevant. It's not like it was a, like a unreported pitch to... I don't know, Joel Embiid when he was a free right. agent. Like, it's not like it's something we don't know. It's from a million years but ago. But we already know that yeah. they pitched LeBron James. We already knew that it was probably corny and stupid and, I don't know, played out. Like, we all, we already knew that. Right. So it's, it's not new. And missed the mark. But do you think that's why Jalen Brunson kind of gets this disrespect mm. nationally because yeah. – of the team he plays for? Is yeah. it something else? Is it the fact it took him a while to become this star? Like, what is it? Uh, it's a couple things. For one, it, it's taken a while for the Knicks to kind of get back into being legit, not yeah. just a team that scraps for the eighth seed or is just happy to be there. You know, that 2012-13 team is kind of an aberration, not something built on long-term mm-hmm. or, or longevity. So it's taken a while for the Knicks to get that respect. But for Brunson, this is only his second year as a guy leading a team. And so his name is not his. He hasn't been a household name. I said this in the preseason why, when he got the Team USA honors. And you know, I said, you know, in order for him to get the all-star recognition year after year, he's got to elevate his brand yeah. some more. Because people were saying, well, well, why is Trey Young out there? And why is mm-hmm. Tyrese Halliburton out there? Look at how many social media followers That's these guys point. have. They're into fashion. They're into this, that, and the third. So they're we, spreading yeah. their brand around. He's it's just getting you started say that with it. because we we discount it because we just look at what's happening on the court most yeah. of the time. But that is such a great point. Yeah, the brand matters, even matters. though it doesn't matter. But it, it matters from when from a, a achievement, from a statistical or not even statistical, like a non statistical, um, like award world. It matters who's paying attention. Interesting. Yeah. Now. This one is more difficult for you. Mm-hmm. And I fight myself this all the time when my team is about to enter the postseason because my philosophy as a sports fan is we got to win it all. Yeah. Okay, how long are we on this planet? I have no idea. I don't know what the rest of the East going to look like next year, the year after that. So you have to take advantage of the moment. So obviously, when you go into the postseason, you should dream about winning an NBA championship. Don't let anyone tell you it can't happen. Sports is a crazy thing. Mm-hmm. But in all seriousness, yep. what is a fair, reasonable expectation for this team? Like, if they got knocked out in the first round of the postseason, even against a team like Philly, I think we would say, boy, this was a major, colossal disappointment. 
Is that a fair statement to make? Disappointment. Major colossal, I wouldn't use those. Because actions. of Philly. Yes. Okay. And, and, and I get be, that. Because of, of what the Knicks are working with right now. Right. You got to be real. I mean, this is a star driven league. In the playoffs, that's where the stars shine bright. And like I said, Jalen Brunson will be there. The rest of the guys, we'll have to see. It's going to be game to game. And, and I could be nuts for saying this. I think if the Sixers win tomorrow night, they may be the favorites in this series. Like the betting odd, yeah. not by a well, lot, they, they kind but of slight are. favorites. They I, are I would give that because of, of yeah. the NBA final honor. Uh, right. They have better odds, odds yeah. to come out of the East right now than the next. Philly's tough. Absolutely. They, they're tough. They, they have the depth. I mean, they, they got guys like Kelly Oubre I know. playing above his socks. That was a guy who no team wanted any parts of. Right. And he's playing these, the legitimate number three guy on that team. So conference fi- not or conference bust. finals. Conference finals is the reasonable expectation yes. from this kind yes. of team. This first round series will be the toughest in terms of them getting there. Mm. I think if they get past either Philly or Miami and they get into that next round where they'll win. I, I agree think with they you. can win. I, I because I don't think Giannis is playing again. Yeah, he he doesn't seem say, like he's going to start. Woj can say whatever he wants about him coming back later in the series. I'm I'm very skeptical of that. Yeah, yeah that's that's a, that's a risky proposition with the calf injury. I know it's just a calf. It's not yeah. an Achilles, but it's connected. Well, we saw that with Durant right. and Aaron Rodgers. Right. right. We saw it with both guys. Yeah. I agree with you. The second round, and it, well, you can't look ahead too far because you still got to take care of the first round, but the road in the second round seems more reasonable. Yeah. The other thing, though, that I think is the caveat, like we all expect Boston to get to the Eastern Conference Finals, but we all expected Milwaukee mm-hmm. to get to the Eastern Conference Semifinals last year, and then they well, get there. And your opponent sometimes changes those expectations. Well, it's interesting if the 76ers, as we're talking about this, beating the Miami Heat and now facing the Knicks, it puts the Heat square against the Celtics. I, I, and that's not right? an easy series for well, Boston. Not at all. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's we talk about getting revenge against the Heat with the Knicks. The Celtics probably have the same exact mindset, right? If, if, the, if, the, if they have to play the Heat, I mean, that's – they should be scared. The Celtics should be scared because they just Absolutely. immediately lost them. I think the Celtics got a terrible draw too. Because right. I mean, if, if they don't play Miami, they're playing Philadelphia. Yeah. Mm. But think about it. Imagine the Celtics having to deal with the Sixers in the best of seven series. You're making excuses yeah, for Jason Tatum. Yeah, but they've always beaten them. I am not. You're making excuses. Right. You're they've making excuses for them, Jason Tatum. They've always found yeah. ways to beat the 76ers, the Celtics, even when yeah. they weren't better than them. Yeah, even but, then when the kids were young, like the, the Tatum and those guys, they were they still beat them. By the way, do you think <laughs> I want the Boston Celtics to be successful? You think as a, as a red-blooded New Yorker, CP, yeah. I want to see Boston have success? As long as the Knicks don't have success, I think so. Yeah, that, I think you're okay, that's yeah. fair. That's yes. fair. Yep. But yep. in general, like I don't want to see Boston do well over Philly. Well, I mean, I mean you're giving me these Sophie choices. Like Philly, <laughs> Boston, New York. I'm serious. I mean, the, the thing Philly that's over Boston? No, no. I'd like to see Orlando come out of the East. <laughs> the thing that's interesting with the Celtics is when you look at the the net rating that uh, that they had throughout most of the regular season and their point differential, and compare it to some of the teams of old. I mean. They're up there with some classic yes. teams. You know, the 72 and 10 Bulls, the Warriors team that beat that Bulls record, you know, the old Laker teams. But I don't see that same dominance. They right. don't feel something, like that. Something no. doesn't Bro, feel Something as does not feel doggish. Right. And it's your boy, Jason Tatum, and his boy, Jalen Brown. Well, because they've J- got to exercise those demons. I, I, look, Jason Tatum came up very small in the NBA Finals two years ago. Like, yeah. nobody can deny that. The one thing I hold out on, and I, I mentioned this about an hour ago in relation to hockey, but I think it makes sense in the NBA. It's other sports can be used as an example that some teams, after an embarrassing defeat or a bad defeat, that following year is an on-a-mission kind of season. Yeah. The San Antonio Spurs lose to the Miami Heat in the NBA Finals, the Ray Allen play. Yeah. And that entire following season was like a revenge tour. Redemption, yep. And guess what happened? They played Miami. They beat the crap out of them in the NBA Finals. It was a revenge tour. Uh, I mentioned that with the Rangers in 94. They missed the playoffs in 93. 94, come back. They win the Cup. The birth of the Island Dyn- Islander dynasty, the same thing. I've had that feel about the Celtics all year. That Think about the last two years. They lose in the NBA Finals. A finals they should have won. Mm-hmm. Let's not forget that. They yeah, should have won, won it. They should have won it. They should have gone up 3-1 on Golden State. They yeah. should have won that series. They blew it. My yeah. boy, if you want to call him that, Jason Tatum, collapses. Yeah. Right? Following year. They were about to come back from 3-0 down on Miami. Yeah, but the fact that they went down 3-0, tells, right. us, it tells you tells you everything. That does tell you everything. Right. And now this is the year in which they've had a dominant regular season. I agree. It doesn't feel like... Who they are match up with the yeah. numbers they put up, but they do have that feel of uh, th- if this if they're ever gonna do it, it's gonna be yeah. this year. This is their revenge tour season. 